Hi. Hi, what are you doing? Oh, that's the kids. <laughs> what are they doing, huh? What are you doing? Taking a nap? Taking sanctuary from the loud kids? <laughs> I don't blame you. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Are you sleepy? I love you. Kiss. Kiss. Mwah. <laughs> I love you. Hi, this is Jenna with Brown Dog Craft Company, and today we're going to make a fun Magic Iris card using a recently released product from Lawn Fawn. It's the Magic Iris Beehive Add-on. So here I've got some of the Magic Iris pieces die cut out, uh, and this is the Beehive Add-on here, and this is the full card front um, add-on for the Magic Iris. So you don't need the full card, the full card front add-on. Uh, it's just nice because it sort of hides your magic iris behind something else. So um, you'll see how we put that together, and I'll explain that more in detail uh, when we get to that part. So here I've die cut some flowers, and I'm using Lawn Fawn cardstock. This is Belly Slippers and Raspberry, and I'm adhering the flowers together with some liquid glue. And then here I have the bees. So the backer of the bee is Lawn Fawn Sunflower, and the front of the bee is Storm Cloud. So I'm going to glue those together. And then using the Lawn Fawn Pearlescent Vellum, I cut out some wings. So we'll put the wings behind the bees. And then uh, I'll add a little bit of white gel pen accents to the front of the bees too, to give them a little bit more detail. But they're so cute! Now I made a card before with these bees that was blue and I flipped the bees around so I put I made a black base with a yellow front. So the bees look a little bit different depending on which way you do them and they're cute both ways. So here I've got the inside of the magic iris. And this is what we're going to uh, reveal inside so it'll be our hidden magic message. So I've got more magic messages which was also recently released I think in the same release that they released the beehive add-on. And I stamped a sentiment there using embossing ink after I prepped the cardstock with my anti-static tool. So it's sending rainbows and sunshine. And then we'll heat emboss that with some Simon Says Stamp Fine Detail White embossing powder. So I'll just melt that embossing powder. And then you can buff away any of the anti-static powder that's left on there. Now here I have the Magic Iris Beehive. And then these three little sausage pieces. So these are going to be what close and open within the beehive. So you'll want to die cut them from whatever color you want the inside of your beehive to be. So I cut all of this from some sunflower cardstock. And I'm ink blending a little bit of wild honey onto all of them. And when I ink blend on these little sausage pieces, I'm not going to ink blend on the little X spot at the end. That's where your glue dot is going to go. So I just want to keep that spot clean to make sure that the glue dot sticks. Now if you go to Lawn Fun's website, they have a really good tutorial that they walk through exactly how to put together the Magic Iris. So that's super helpful to watch uh, if you've never put one together before or if you just need some reminding. Okay and then here I've got some vintage photo distress oxide and I'm just going to um, blend that just around the edges, just on the beehive. Add some more dimension to the beehive. And then I'll blend it all out a little bit more with uh, um, wild honey when I'm, th when I'm through. It's so cute, I love it. And then here I'm ink blending on a glass mat. It's super easy to clean up. I just spray a little bit of water and wipe it clean with a cloth. So this is the honeycomb stencil that was released the same time as the Magic Iris Beehive add-on. And I'm taking, instead of starting with a white piece of cardstock, I'm starting with ballet slippers. And I've cut that down to an A2 panel. And this is what we're going to cut the full card front Magic Iris die from. But before I do that, I'd like to add some detail. So I'm taking the largest honeycomb stencil that's on the stencil. There's like four or five different 
um, little pieces on the stencil. So I'm just picking one and I want to do my whole background in this pattern. So I'm just lining the stencil up and moving it around as I go. And this is uh, Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide. So I'm just going to go across the whole panel and cover it with that. Now when you're using your Distress Oxide ink, you'll want to make sure you use a blending brush that is different than the blending brush you use for dye inks. D the Distress Oxide ink has a different makeup to it and um, it's just very different than your dye ink. It stays wet a lot longer, it has more of like a chalky consistency, sort of pigmenty. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It's a, it's a special formula and uh, just make sure you use different blending brushes or clean your blushes really well before and after. So here I'm going to take some saltwater taffy and I'm going for very subtle here. So I'm moving to a different stencil on the stencil or a different part of the stencil that has a little bit of masking on it and I'm just adding a little bit of definition. It's hard to see on camera but in real life you can definitely see there are lighter spots and darker spots. So um, you know if I were to make this card again I would probably flip and do it the other way around and use the light color first, but I wasn't sure I wanted to use the light color until I already had the dark color down. So rather than start all over, I just thought I would go with it. So I'm doing the same thing, just randomly moving around the stencil. I'm not masking anything off. Um, not going for perfection here, just... Uh, and then I'll take that same saltwater taffy and blend on the background, make it a little bit softer. Now I wanted a little bit more um, variants to the background. So I'm going to take the teeny little honeycomb there and some Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink and I'll line that up again randomly on the background and add just a little bit of that and I really think that that does make a big difference in um, the background here. Now it looks a little harsh at first so I will go back. I'm not going to add any more ink, but I will use what's left over on my saltwater taffy brush to sort of soften that white a little bit. And I think that looks perfect. So when you're peeling your cardstock off of your sticky mat, instead of bending your cardstock, you should bend your sticky mat. And then your cardstock sort of pops right off like that. It won't hurt your sticky mat. And if you do it that way, it won't hurt your cardstock either. So here I'm going to line up the card front panel for the Magic Iris wherever I think it looks best and I'll die cut that out. So here you'll see that panel die cuts the little notch and the center of the Magic Iris. So here we'll work on putting together the Magic Iris. So we have this uh, first ring that has this little these little notches cut out of it. I think in the video for Lawn Fun they call it the flux capacitor, which is really cute. So you put your little sausage pieces into those holes and then you line them up along the outside of the ring. Not the inside, you line them up around the outside. And then there are three little X's on the ends of those sausage pieces and you'll put small glue dots on all of them. And that's the only glue that you put on this part of the magic iris because you want these pieces to move in and out. Um, and so that's part of how the mechanism works. You only want glue on these very specific pieces. So now that I've added some glue, some glue dots, I'll mess around with it a little bit, get it where I want it to be, and then I put this beauty ring on top of it. So this is just another ring that's die cut out um, from the Magic Iris die. Now, when you flip over your Magic Iris, there's these little notches, and they're sort of like embossed detail, and it tells you where to put your adhesive to put these fasteners. So I use my tape runner and put adhesive only in those areas and then put, put down the fasteners. Then we'll flip it over and you make a V shape with this little, this little piece that I'm adding here is the lever that actually makes your magic iris open and close. So you make a V with one of the little fasteners down at the bottom and then you put your final beauty ring on the very top without any glue. You don't need any adhesive. The only place you're going to put adhesive is on these three tabs. You're going to hold all of your magic iris together and then you loosely close these tabs and push them down. Now if you uh, close it too tightly then your magic iris won't open or close. So, um, And that's the only place that you put glue. 
Now, um, I suggest playing with your magic iris and opening and closing it a lot. I think the more you open and close it, the better it'll work. So don't be discouraged if you do this and it doesn't open quite right the first time. Just play with it some, and uh, generally that works for me. So, And now it's time we can put the magic iris behind the card panel here. So I think you can probably put glue on other places now, but I'm scared to, so I always only put glue on these little tabs. <laughs> So I'll line that up. We want to make sure that the magic iris is closed when we do this and that the notch to the magic iris is sticking out or that the notch on the card front panel has that little lever sticking out and then we'll push that down. Now uh, what I should have done first was adhered my magic iris hidden message to my cardstock before I did this. Um, I had to do it a little bit harder. It still worked, and we'll get to that in just a minute. <laughs> so I didn't think it was lined up. <coughs> didn't think it was lined up perfectly, so I'm going to try again. There we go. That's better. There we go. Now there's a little beauty. Um piece that you can put on over here. So I cut that out of raspberry and then the little arrow because you can do two tones so I did ballet slippers and that'll be the little lever so we decorated that. Yay! Cute! Now we'll use some liquid glue and we'll add the beehive to the front. And then uh, we'll start decorating. So here I've got some foam strips. Um, all of these die cut pieces are from the Magic Iris Beehive add-on. So I die cut this from light brown wood grain cardstock and we'll adhere that with some foam strips. And then I'll decorate the card with leaves which are cut from Hero Arts Kiwi. And I'll add some leaves to the branches and around the beehive a bit and down with some flowers toward the bottom. I'm just using liquid glue to adhere most of this. The bees will pop up with some small foam squares. But all the flowers are glued flat to the card. So we'll just sort of arrange those wherever they look cute. No real rhyme or reason, <laughs> just sort of um, dressing up the beehive a bit. We'll sneak a few leaves behind the beehive. And then uh, I wanted to add another sentiment. So in the Lawn Fawn beehive, no, hive, hive five, um, yeah, Hive 5 <laughs> Stamp and Die set. There's this cute sentiment. It says, you're sweet as honey. So I stamp that in clear embossing ink and onto some raspberry cardstock and then heat emboss that sentiment in white again and put some foam behind it. Oh, I die cut it with the uh, Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiment banners, which have this cute little banner on either side. And then also in that high five set are these little honeycomb dies. So I die cut those from the ballet slippers and I'm gonna glue those onto the card. They're very subtle, um, but just a little more detail. So we'll put those sort of behind where the sentiment's gonna go with some liquid glue. And then I'll pop up the sentiment here and I'll add a little flower down at the bottom. So that'll sort of peek out around the sentiment. And then we'll add one more B over to the right, just above the sentiment. I felt like it needed more than two Bs, so. Cute. Line that up straight there. And there's our last little flower and our B. So I'm just putting a foam square at the top of the B since the sentiment is already um, on foam squares. Perfect. 
Now here's where I'm going to attempt to slide in uh, the magic message. So this is on storm cloud. I don't know if I mentioned that before. And normally I think you should do this before <coughs> you make your magic iris, but I forgot and this worked. So I just sort of guessed, used some liquid glue and then moved around the little hidden message until it was where it needed to be on the card. So it worked. I did it a little backwards, but it works out in the end. <laughs> so then I've got um, on this raspberry cardstock here that is um, got some adhesive on the back and we'll add that to a ballet slipper top folding A2 card, card front or card card there and then so it'll be ballet slippers and then raspberry and then popped up on foam adhesive is the magic iris piece. So we're almost done. We're going to add some pretty pink posh pearls and these are either blush or f these are blush but I feel like I maybe did flamingo too. Um, I can't remember. So I'm going to scatter some of the blush. I'll scatter let's see five around the card and then I'll add one to each of the flowers as the little flower center or the little flower center. A cute little heart somewhere would be fun too. That's where my little heart wheel is over there on the left and I, I just couldn't figure out where I wanted one. So here I am with the flamingo I think. So apparently some of the cards have flamingo or I mean some of the flowers. <laughs> Now, uh, finally, we are going to take our gel pen and add some highlights to the images. So I'll add it to all of the leaves. The bees already have it. And then I will add it to um, the honeycomb just on one side, or the beehive. The beehive just on the one side there. I'm just trying to be careful not to put my, head in, my hand in what I just wrote so I don't smear it. And that finishes our card for today. This turned out super cute. I love the pink. Um, I love the stenciled background. I love the bees. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe and like and leave a comment to let me know if you like this card or the teal card that I made that was similar to this um, a couple weeks ago. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. Bye now.